here we are going to discuss about uh, the later mauryas so after decline of uh, mauryan dynasty you see in 184 in 184 bc mauryan dynasty is declined mauryan dynasty is declined after mauryan dynasty in north india and also in south india so in south india the de facto authorities of uh, mauryas they declared independence in south india they declared independence they are shatavahanas so after decline of uh, mauryas dynasty in south india shatavahanas are became independent okay now south india it's a safe side but what about uh, north india so in north india we have conflicts political uh, uncertainty the political uncertainty was there that's why here after mauryas or later mauryas there are two kinds of uh, kingdoms two kinds of dynasties entered in north india that is a uh, one native kingdoms and uh, foreign kingdoms so you understand perfectly after declined of mauryas north india has uh, some political uncertainty that's why there are two kinds of uh, dynasties are existed that dynasties are called uh, one native or local dynasties and uh, foreign dynasties but in south india what happened shatavanas are became independent so regarding south india there was no problem politically it's became very sound but north india it has uh, these uh, uncertainty system that's why uh, after after mauryas declining so in north india we have local political dynasties or local kingdoms and uh, one more foreign kingdoms so foreign kingdoms so local kingdoms are two local kingdoms are two that is uh, sungas that is sungas and uh, kanvas so kanvas so sungas and uh, kanvas in uh, that is called local dynasties and uh, foreign dynasties we have foreign dynasties also so here foreign dynasties means one so indo bactrians indo bactrians indo bactrians two so indo after indo bactrians uh, uh, we have that is uh, shaka shaka and uh, parthian parthian and uh, kushans kushans so foreign kingdoms those are indo bactrians shaka kingdom and uh, parthian kingdom kushans so these are the called uh, the foreign kingdoms so we should because so many people will have doubt after mauryas uh, declining of mauryas what was political condition political situation in north india that's why so these are the local kingdoms and these are the foreign kingdoms total north india it is occupied by these kingdoms okay now we can go for one by one first uh, shungas who are the shungas so how they came what they have ruled so we have to see about the shunga dynasty but here uh, the years we may have confusion regarding the period and years that's why it is better to not mention it is a better to not mention that's why so we can say this is later mauryas but regarding period regarding years there is no particular indicating the years okay this is we go for the shungas shunga dynasty founder was pushyamitra shunga he was founder of shunga dynasty earlier uh, we know that uh, information pushyamitra shunga killed uh, the last king of uh, mauryas that is bruhadrada so after killing bruhadrada pushyamitra shunga established uh, shunga dynasty so we should remember the mauryas last emperor that is uh, bruhadrada uh, he was killed by his army chief as well as minister that is pushyamitra shunga so pushyamitra shunga killed bruhadrada established shunga dynasty so in north india we have after mauryas later mauryas 
uh, in North India, the dynasty is established by Pushyamitra Shunga. So, his capital Pataliputram. His capital Pataliputram. Later, capital is shifted to uh, Vidarsha. Later, capital is shifted to Vidarsha. So, what are the sources of uh, this Shunga dynasty? It is purely native local dynasty. It is purely local dynasty. So, what are the sources? What are the sources of uh, this Shunga dynasty? Especially, we have some books. We have some books. That is uh, uh, Panini Astadhyayini. Panini Astadhyayini. So, Panini Astadhyayini is the most important book. And uh, uh, Patanjali. So, Patanjali he was in the period of Shungas. Patanjali. So, he wrote Mahabhashyam. Patanjali wrote Mahabhashyam. So, Patanjali was in the period of Shungas. He was stayed in the period of Shungas. You know, who was Patanjali? Yoga. Mahabhashyam, it explains about the yoga. So, he introduced yoga to India and also as well as the world. That's why, so Patanjali was in the period of Shungas. He wrote Mahabhashyam. Mahabhashyam also explaining about the Shunga dynasty. And uh, one more important book, we have Malavika Agni Mitramu. Malavika, Malavika Agni Mitramu. So, one more book we have, that is Malavika Agni Mitram. You know, Malavika Agni Mitram, it is written by, uh, Malavika Agni Mitram, it is written by Agni uh, Kalidasu. It is written by Kalidasu. You know, who was Kalidasu? Kalidas also called uh, Indian Shakespeare. Kalidas also called uh, Indian Shakespeare. He was a great poet in Sanskrit. So, he was in the period of Guptas. Especially, uh, in the period of Second Chandra Gupta, Kalidasa was there. He wrote uh, so many dramas and uh, great uh, books. So, in that uh, books, uh, books and Natakas, uh, the dramas we have, um, Abhignana Shakuntalamu, Kumara Sangbhavamu, Mega Sandeshamu, as well as Malavika Agnimitramu. This Malavika Agnimitramu, it is uh, the story regarding Agnimitra. Agnimitra belongs to this Shunga dynasty. That's why, so here, these are the books especially, these are the books uh, explaining about uh, the Shunga's information and Shunga's dynasty. So, Shunga, he has taken Bhagavata religion. So, Shunga is the ruler. He has taken Bhagavata religion. In the period of Shunga's, Bhagavata religion is introduced in India. Actually, Bhagavata religion means uh, the religion which is uh, uh, introduced, the religion which is introduced by Sri Krishna or Vasudeva. This is called Bhagavata religion. That means uh, who are worshipping Sri Krishna, who are worshipping Vasudeva, that is called Bhagavata religion. So, here, just you understand, this is we can say Vindhya Satpura mountains. This is we can say Vindhya Satpura mountains. So, below these Vindhya Satpura mountains, below this Vindhya Satpura mountains, this area totally under the control of Shatavanas. It is under the control of Shatavanas. But this is the area under the control of, so this area under the control of Shungas. That's why in North India, Shungas are ruled. In South India, Shatavanas are ruled. But in the boundary, here this is the area of Indo-Bactrian area. So, this is Indo-Bactrian area. So, here Minandar stopped the horses of Pushamitra Shunga. But Pushamitra Shunga defeated Minandar and occupied this area. So, this is the information regarding Shungas. After Pushamitra Shunga is a successor that is Agnimitra. So, Agnimitra. You know, Agnimitra, he was a hero of Malavika Agnimitra. You see, Kalidasu, he wrote Malavika Agnimitramu. Malavika Agnimitramu, it is the story regarding Agnimitra. So, in the period of Agnimitra, he was the strongest. In the Shunga's dynasty, he was the strongest. He defeated, he defeated up to Vidarsha area. So, once Vidarsha also defeated by uh, Shatavanas. But here, Agnimitra again, he gained uh, Vidarsha. So, in this Shungas, uh, the last one, so Devabhuti, the last king was Devabhuti. 
in the Shungas, the last king was Devabhuti. So, in the period of Devabhuti, there is a Garuda Stamba in Besa Nagar, the Vishnu temple. Uh, Garuda Stamba in Besa Nagar. We should remember there is the Garuda pillar or Garuda Stamba. He is laid at Besa Nagar in the period of Devabhuti. So, he was the last ruler of Shunga dynasty. So, Devabhuti is uh, killed by Vasudeva Kanva. Whenever Devabhuti is killed, the Shunga dynasty is closed. So, now Shunga dynasty totally it is occupied by the Kanvas. Now, we go for one more local dynasty that is Kanva dynasty. Okay? First one, already I told you, after Mauryasa, total India occupied by uh, two local dynasties, four non-local dynasties. In the two local dynasties, first one Shunga dynasty and second one Kanva dynasty. Okay, now, we go for Kanvas. So, after Shungas, North India defeated by Kanvas. So, Kanva dynasty founder was Vasudeva Kanva. Vasudeva Kanva was the founder of Kanva dynasty. But here you see, uh, we, have, we have no more information regarding Kanvas. Just uh, uh, Kanva dynasty has four rulers. Kanva dynasty has uh, four rulers and they ruled 45 years. Bus. Four rulers, 45 years. So there, first one, Vasudeva Kanva. First one was Deva Kanva, second Bhumiputra Kanva, Bhumiputra Kanva, and third Narayana Kanva, Narayana Kanva, fourth Susharma, Susharma Kanva. So these are the four rulers: Was Deva Kanva, Bhumiputra Kanva, Narayana Kanva. Susharma Kanva. So, these four rulers ruled just 45 years. They ruled 45 years. In the period of Kanvas, the capital city shifted from Vidarsha to again Patliputra. So, it is uh, shifted from Vidarsha to Patliputra. So, this is the information regarding uh, Kanvas. But last Kanva, Susharma Kanva, he was defeated by Shatavahanas. So, Susharma Kanva is defeated by Shatavanas. So, this is uh, the information regarding Kanva dynasty. After local dynasties, India was uh, ruled by the foreign kingdoms. In that foreign kingdoms, we have Indo-Bactrians, Shekas, Parthians and Kushans. So, these are the four dynasties. So, among that four dynasties, uh, we have Indo-Bactrians. So, actually, this is also called uh, Indo-Greeks, Indo-Bactrians also called Indo-Greeks. So, Greeks uh, once they settled in Bactria. That's why from Bactria they attacked our India. That's why they are called Indo-Bactrians. Actually, you know, all the foreign kingdoms, these are uh, all foreign kingdoms, they came to India, they captured Indian kingdoms as a foreigner, but uh, they joined in Indian stream. They mingled uh, Indian stream. So, finally, they have taken Hindu system, they followed Hindu traditions and uh, they being as a uh, Indian, Hindu, Hindu or Indian. That is why all these foreign kingdoms uh, became Indian kingdoms. So, here this is a uh, Indo-Bactrian kingdom. So, here Indo-Bactrian's original place Greek, once they came to Bactria, from Bactria only they attacked on India. So, here Indo-Bactrian uh, founder, this kingdom founder was uh, Demotrius. Demotrius. So, Demotrius, uh, he was uh, the founder of uh, Indo-Bactrian kingdom. So, his capital was Shakala. His capital was Shakala. This is called Seol Court. Shakala, it is called Seol Court. Right now, it is in Pakistan. So, Shakala was a uh, capital of Indo-Bactrians. So, in Indo-Bactrians, the important king was Minander. The important strongest king was Minander. So, important king and strongest king was Minander. Minander, you know, he is also called in Buddhist language Milinda. He is called Milinda. 
is called Milinda, according to Buddhist language. So Menander, he was a Greek, uh, uh, he was Greek, although he has taken Buddhism, because of Nagasena, because of Nagasena, he has taken Buddhism. Nagasena was the Buddhist monk. Nagasena was Buddhist monk. Because of Nagasena, Minander has taken Buddhism. That's why, so the discussions between Minander and Nagasena, what are the discussions between Minander and Nagasena? The discussions are uh, framed as a book by Nagasena. That book is called Milinda Panaha. We, we should remember this book name Milinda Panaha. It is called Milinda Panaha. Milinda Panaha is the most important book regarding Minander. This is written by Nagasena. This book, it is the discussions between Nagasena and Minander. So, Minander is called Milinda as per the Buddhist language, Buddhist system. So, Minander was the strongest king. He developed Indo-Bactrian kingdom. And the last one, Hermaj. In Indo-Bactrian kingdom, the last one, Hermaj. Okay. So, this is we can say Indo-Bactrian kingdom. So, the contribution to Indian society, Indian culture. The contribution, what was the contribution of Indo-Bactrians? What was the contribution? You see, they introduced they introduced gold coins first in India. Indo-Bactrians, you may have the question, we will get the question, who are the foreigners introduced gold coins in India? That is, uh, Indo-Bactrians are introduced gold coins in India. So, they used Karosti script. They used Karosti script on the coins also. So, the contribution, they introduced gold coins in India. And uh, second contribution, they introduced Gandhara style of sculpture. You know, what is Gandhara style of sculpture? So, Gandhara style of sculpture is uh, uh, regarding Buddhism especially. So, Gandhara style of sculpture is introduced in India by Indo-Bactrians. So, after uh, Indo-Bactrians, we have Sekas. This is called Sheka kingdom. So, northwest of India occupied by Sekas, especially who are Shakas. These Shakas are called, they belongs to Tokarian tribe. They belongs to Tokarian tribe. Actually, uh, they have no particular shelter, they have no particular area, but their profession that is attacking on South China, attacking on China villages and uh, China towns. So, that is the main profession of these Shakas. But in 220 BC, in 220 BC, China ruler Shi Wang Tsi, China ruler Shi Wang Tsi, he constructed, he built China wall around China uh, because of uh, threatening from Shekas to protect uh, China villages and China areas. Shi Wang Tsi, he built China wall in 220 BC. Whenever he uh, constructed, he built China wall, from that day onwards, there was a surviving problem to Shekas. There is no surviving. Uh, that's why they wanted to move towards India. They wanted to move towards India. So that's why they came to India uh, in northwest part, especially uh, in Takshashila area and uh, northwest Gujarat, Maharashtra. These areas uh, under the control of the Shekas. So Shekas uh, founder was uh, that is Moses and uh, the Last king was Agent 2. Agent 2. Last king was Agent 2. So, Shekas, whenever they settled in India, they have two parts. They have divided two parts. The two parts are called uh, that is Takshashila Shekas and uh, uh, Maharashtra Shekas. So, the Shekas gradually became so, Kshatra Pass, whenever Sheka is closed, uh, their uh, state rulers, Sheka's state rulers, they are called Kshatra Pass. So, Kshatra Pass, uh, they run the kingdom of uh, Sheka's, they are called Kshatra Pass. Kshatra Pass means uh, the rulers of the states. 
So there the important kings was that is Nahapana. Nahapana. So he is uh, the important uh, king of Maharashtra area Kshatrapas. So Nahapana, he was the important king of Maharashtra Kshatrapas. He was defeated by Gautami Putra Shatakani. He was defeated by Gautami Putra Shatakani. And uh, actually Nahapana issued the coins, silver coins. But Gautami Putra Shatakan defeated Nahapana and he wrote his name on the coins of Nahapana. So that's why here Nahapana was the important ruler in Maharashtra Kshatrapas. And second, Gujarat and Malva Kshatrapas. Gujarat and Malva Kshatrapas. Here Rudradama was the important ruler. Rudradama was important ruler in Malva and Gujarat Kshatrapas. You know, Rudradama, uh, he laid a Girnar inscription. He laid Girnar inscription. Also called Junagar inscription. Also called Junagar inscription. So, this is the most important point Girnar and Junagar inscription. These inscription, Girnar and Junagar both are same. So, they are not a, a different. But both are same. That uh, inscriptions laid by Rudradama. Okay, this is the first uh, Sanskrit uh, inscriptions in India. This is the uh, first uh, Sanskrit inscription in India by Rudradama. So he is the important king in Malwa Kshatrapas. So this is we can say Shaka dynasty. So then uh, we go for one more uh, foreign dynasty that is Parthians. So, Parthians are also called Pahallavas. They are also called Pahallavas. So, not Pallavas. They are also called Pahallavas. So, this is also one of the foreign dynasty for Pahallavas and Parthians. So, the important king in this Pahallavas that is Gando Farnis. Gando Farnis. So, the important king of Pahallavas of Parthians, Gando Farnis. So, in his period, uh, we have the most important point, uh, Saint Thomas, Saint Thomas who was the follower of Jesus Christ, one of the Jesus Christ follower that is Saint Th Thomas, he came to India in the period of uh, Gandalfarnes. So he propagated Christianity in India, the first person in India introduced and uh, propagated Christianity that is uh, uh, Saint Thomas. So. Saint Thomas while propagating the Christianity in India, he was killed in Madras, Mailavaram area. In Madras, Mailavaram area, he was killed. So, for memory of this uh, Thomas, we have the Saint Thomas Church in Cochin. Uh, one more important uh, foreign dynasty in India, that is uh, Kushans. So, Kushans, uh, they are, uh, uh, they belong to Yuchi tribe. They belong to Yuchi tribe. Kushans are belonging to Yuchi tribe. It is in Central Asia, nearby South China. So they have they belong to Yuchi tribe. But uh, actual that Yuchi tribe uh, people are five kinds. In that five kinds, one of the uh, kind, uh, one of the kind that is Kushans. So Kushans dynasty founder Kuzala Kardfaisas. Kujala Kardfaisas. Okay, he was the founder. And uh, after Kujala Kardfaisas, he entered to India and uh, he, he established a dynasty in northwest of India. After Kujala Kardfaisas, we have Vima Kardfaisas. We have Vima Kardfaisas. So, both are the established ruled uh, the dynasty in India. But in Kushans, uh, we have the important king that is Kanishka. So he was a great king in total foreign kingdoms. So Indo-Bactrians, Shekas, Parthians, Kushans. Among these rulers, Kanishka was the important ruler. So he ruled from uh, AD 75 to, sorry, 78 to 125 AD. So this is the period of Kanishka. 
So, AD 78 to 125 AD, he was a son of Vima Cardphysis. He was son of Vima Cardphysis and he established Vyast dynasty. So, what are the sources for Kanishka's history? What are the sources for Kanishka's history? There are so many sources we have. So, we have to see that uh, sources. Uh, Kanishka, what are the sources for Kanishka's history? Especially, we have Charaka Samhita. Charaka Samhita. So, Charaka Samhita is the most important source for Kanishka's history. It is written by Charakudu. It is it written by Charakudu, Charaka Samhita. And uh, so, uh, Vasum, Vasumitra, we have Vasumitra. You know, Vasumitra, he was uh, the chairman of uh, Fourth Buddhist Council Vasumitra. So, he wrote Mahavibhasha Shastram. Mahavibhasha Mahavibhasha Shastra. So, Vasumitra wrote this book. So, Charaka Samhita, Charaka Samhita, you know, Charakudu, he wrote Charaka Samhita. Charaka Samhita is uh, the first uh, diagnosis book in India. It is the first diagnosis book in India. So, these are the books. Uh, uh, giving the information regarding Kanishka's history. And later, so Kanishka has uh, titles, he has uh, uh, important titles. That is, uh, first one, Deva Putra, he has the title Deva Putra. And uh, second title, he has a second title, that is uh, Caesar, also called, uh, he also called second Ashoka, he has a uh, Caesar. Once again, Deva Putra, Caesar, second Ashoka, and Parameshwara. He has these titles. So, Devaputra, especially you see Devaputra title will come in the examinations often. That is why we should remember who has the title Devaputra. So, Kanishka has title Devaputra, Devaputra, Caesar and uh, second uh, Ashoka as well as uh, we have one more title that is uh, Parameshwara. So, these are the titles of uh, Kanishka. So, Kanishka actually he was a son of Vima Cardphysis, but whenever uh, he, he was the king defeated uh, up to Central Asia. Actually, uh, Central Asia is not ruled by any Indian kings, but here Kanishka attacked up to Central Asia and occupied uh, Central Asia. But you see, he is a one and only king attacked and occupied uh, Central Asia, but also Kanishka attacked on. Kanishka attacked on the China, but uh, he is only one king attacked on China, only one Indian king attacked on China. So, uh, he was defeated by China army chief Pan Chavo, he was defeated by China army chief Pan Chavo. So, after this defeating got the title Devaputra, because these titles will have in China's, China. That is why, whenever it, uh, he defeated by China, but he got uh, the title Devaputra. So, regarding uh, Kanishka, regarding Kanishka, he has taken Buddhism, but first of all, he has called Parameshwara. That means, uh, he followed Hinduism, especially Shaivism, but later, uh, he followed uh, Buddhism. Why? Because, Buddhism is preached by Ashwagosha. Ashwagosha he preached Buddhism to Kanishka. You know, who is Ashwagosha? He wrote Buddha Charitam. Ashwagosha wrote Buddha Charitam. And Vasumitra, Ashwagosha, both are in the period of Kanishka. Uh, because of Ash Ashwagosha, he has taken Buddhism. So, he became the Buddhist. Kanishka became Buddhist. So, he conducted, Kanishka conducted fourth Buddhist council in Kundalavanam. It is in Kashmir area. So, in Kundalavaram, he conducted fourth Buddhist council. So, in 100 AD, in 100 AD, so the chairman was Vasumitra, the chairman of fourth Buddhist council that is Vasumitra. And uh, Kanishka, he was the king, uh, conducted the meeting here only. He, uh, in this meeting, the Buddhism has second slip, slip uh, sorry, split. Buddhism has a second split. That is Mahayana, Hinayana. So, in his period, we have the most important uh, writers that is Charaka, Vasumitra, 
అశ్వఘోష సో వసుమిత్ర అశ్వఘోష బోత్ ఆర్ ది బుద్ధిస్ట్ ప్లైడ్ ఐ టోల్డ్ యూ సో అశ్వఘోష అవ్రోట్ బుద్ధ చరితం బట్ ద వన్ మోర్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ పర్సన్ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున ఆచార్య నాగార్జున హి వాజ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కనిష్క ఆచార్య నాగార్జున హి వాజ్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కనిష్క సో యునో ఆచార్య నాగార్జున హి వాజ్ హి వాజ్ లివింగ్ ఇన్ నాగార్జున కొండ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున సో ఇట్ ఈస్ నందికొండ ఓకే సో ఆచార్య నాగార్జున ఈ హ్యాస్ ద టైటిల్స్ యునో వి షుడ్ రిమెంబర్ ద టైటిల్స్ ఆఫ్ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున హీ ఈస్ కాల్డ్ ఇండియన్ ఐనిస్టిన్ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున హ్యాస్ ద టైటిల్ ఇండియన్ ఐనిస్టిన్ అండ్ ఆల్సో హీ హ్యాస్ ద టైటిల్ సెకండ్ తథాగత హీ హ్యాస్ ద టైటిల్ సెకండ్ తథాగత ఇండియన్ ఐనిస్టిన్ అండ్ సెకండ్ తథాగత వై బికాస్ వై he got the title indian einstein means so he wrote the great book regarding chemistry that is ratna rasaratnavali he wrote rasaratnavali this is the chemistry book that's why because of this book he got the title of title as a second uh, indian einstein so acharya nagarjuna wrote suhru lekhana rasaratnavali madhyamika vada etc he wrote suhru lekhana rasaratnavali మాధ్యమిక వాద యు రోట్ దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ బుక్స్ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున రోట్ దీస్ బుక్స్ దట్స్ వై ఆచార్య నాగార్జున కాంట్రిబ్యూషన్ వాజ్ దేర్ సో ఈ ప్రపోజ్డ్ మహాయాన బుద్ధిజం ఆచార్య నాగార్జున ప్రపోజ్డ్ మహాయాన బుద్ధిజం దట్స్ వై ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కనిష్క దీస్ ఆర్ ది చేంజెస్ దీస్ ఆర్ ది ఇంప్రూవ్మెంట్స్ ఇన్ ది పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కనిష్క యునో కనిష్క సో ఫా we have to say we, we, uh, we have to say this date 78 ad 78 ad we should remember this uh, date uh, he became the ruler kanishka became the ruler in 78 ad so this is called sheka era in indian calendar we have sheka era so sheka era starts from 78 ad that means uh, whenever kanishka became the ruler uh, when he came to throne from that day onwards uh, sheka era sheka era means uh, indian calendar starts from 78 ad if you see indian calendar if you see indian calendar uh, as per sheka era uh, it is uh, uh, i think uh, 1937 there will be in, in, if you see indian calendar so on the top of the calendar there is a box there 1937 year 2017 this is 2017 but there we have uh, 1937 maybe like that that's why so in 2000 just like uh, 17 we have to uh, deduct 78 uh, if you deduct 78 uh, so 9 so so what is this uh, uh, 3 yeah 1939 indian calendar if you see indian calendar uh, now if you go and see there so in the calendar we have 1939 what is 1939 yes according to sheka era this is uh, 1939 year so this is called sheka era whenever kanishka came to throne whenever he uh, he became the ruler from that day onwards it's called sheka era this is a great uh, contribution great honor to kanishka so in the period of kanishka so the most important point we have to remember silk route <coughs> in the period of kanishka we have silk route silk route means uh, from rome to, uh, from china to rome there was a route uh, the silk uh, importing exporting from china to rome rome to china so the silk uh, what is a silk product it was exporting from china to rome so that's why there's a main route through that tibet area that is sorry that jammu kashmir like that area it goes it is called silk route this is the most important point in the period of kanishka so but anyhow in the kushans kanishka was the important ruler and is the greatest ruler kanishka he has a silk route in his period the silk route is uh, started silk route means uh, from china to central asia up to rome the route which is uh, transporting of uh, silk that's called uh, silk route so kanishka 
has taken Buddhism as per earlier class he has taken Buddhism by the preachers of Ashwagosha and also he constructed Kanishkapuram he constructed Kanishkapuram so he constructed Kanishkapuram so his capital was so Peshawar his capital was Peshawar and Madura he has two capitals one is Peshawar and Madura so in the period of Kanishka this uh, Gandhara style of sculpture is developed. In the period of Kanishka, Gandhara style of sculpture is developed. Because if you see, uh, we will have the question, we will get the question, in whose period Gandhara style of sculpture is developed. So, Gandhara style of sculpture is introduced by Indo-Greeks, that means uh, Indo-Bactrians, introduced. But developed in the period of Kanishka. That is why we should remember, Gandhara style of sculpture is developed in the period of Kanishka. In the period of Kanishka, Madura style of sculpture also started. Actually, in India, we have two kinds of style of sculptures. One, Gandhara style of sculpture. Second, Madura style of sculpture. So, Gandhara style of sculpture is introduced by Greeks, Indo-Greeks or Indo-Bactrians. But Madura style of sculpture is introduced in the period of Kanishka. That's why we should remember there are two style of sculptures. One is a Gandhara style of sculpture and one more is a Madhura style of sculpture. You know what is the difference between Gandhara and Madhura? Madhura is a, uh, it is developed in central India and uh, Indian gods or goddess. So what we are looking now, what we are seeing the Indian gods and goddess, this is uh, the uh, sculpture. Hindu gods and goddess sculpture, it is called Madhra style of sculpture. So, Buddha is a style, is statues, Buddha shapes, it is a Gandhara style of sculpture. So, this is a uh, two sculptures are developed. Uh, uh, this is a Gandhara is developed in the period of Kanishka, Madhura is introduced in the period of Kanishka. And uh, so, Kanishka. He was a, uh, actually was a Hindu, first of all he has taken, because you see, his grandfather has taken Buddhism, his grandfather has taken Buddhism, that means Kujala Karpaisas, and uh, his father has taken Hinduism, he was a devotee of uh, Shiva, that's why there are two effects, because of his father, he was a Shaivist, Hindu, but later, uh, Ashwagosha preached Buddhism to Kanishka. That's why Kanishka has taken Buddhism. So, here uh, in Kanishka, Kushans, Kushans, uh, uh, they are called secularists. Kushans are called secularists because uh, they have not followed any single religion. But each ruler, they followed different religions. That's why this is a Kushans period is called uh, the secular stage. Because you see, uh, Kusala Karpaises was founder of Kushans, he has taken Buddhism. Even though, what are the kinds issued by uh, Kusala Karpaises? So, on that kinds, uh, the Buddha uh, picture is there. On the kinds of Kusala Karpaises, Buddha picture was on the coins. He used, uh, he printed the Buddha's uh, picture on the coins. And uh, here, uh, Vima Karpaises. Vima Karpaises means, uh, father of Kanishka. So, Vima Karpaises has taken Hinduism. But basically, his father has taken Buddhism, but uh, he has taken Hinduism, especially Shaivism. So, uh, on the coins of uh, uh, Kuzala, Vima Karpaises, the Shiva and Nandi, Shiva Nandi pictures are uh, on the coins of uh, Vima Karpaises. That is why, so he has taken Buddhism, he has taken Hinduism and uh, Kanishka, Kanishka has taken in Mahayana Buddhism, he has taken Mahayana Buddhism because Acharya Nagarjuna was there, because of Acharya Nagarjuna he has taken Mahayana Buddhism. So, uh, and uh, last one Vasudeva Kanva, Vasudeva Kanva he has taken Hinduism, that is what I am saying in the period of Kushans, the secularism is developed in this India. But anyhow, so Kanishka, he was a great king, great ruler in India. So, he 
he was uh, being a uh, he was being a foreigner but he joined an indian stream and uh, he followed indian system also okay so this is uh, the kanishka's information after kanishka we have havishka after kanishka we have avishka so avishka uh, he was the king described or mentioned in the kalahas kalahanas rajatarangini kalahana rajatarangini so it described about to avishka and after avishka we have second kanishka after avishka we have second kanishka and the last one in kushans last one in kushans that is vasudeva that one la vasudeva so he was uh, defeated by persians and uh, the kingdom which is ruled by kushans uh, it is given to um, persians so in the vasudeva period the kushans dynasty is closest is declined that's why the last king in kushan dynasty that is vasudeva okay now just little bit information regarding kushans uh, administration system and uh, their social conditions so kushans administration system it is centralized administration system because here uh, only the king has sovereignty he ruled the country that's why it is called centralized administration so in his uh, in kushans period especially the women social regarding social conditions uh, it is a paternal society women has a respectable position here and uh, here sati also is a uh, introduced sati also it was there and social levels also there although here uh, kushans uh, they have given the importance to women especially uh, in india the kushans are introduced the dressing styles they introduced dress dressing styles that means so now we are wearing pant shirt and cap shoe all are introduced by kushans in india before kushans uh, indians weared they have not weared pant coat uh, like hat uh, cap they have not weared anything but uh, whenever kushans are entered so they introduce to india this kind of uh, dressing styles so that's why this is a great great to uh, great uh, contribution to indian society by kushans and here the important uh, uh, cloth is kashika kashika vastram it is a, we should remember kashika vastram this is a most important uh, uh question which which cloth is uh, uh, introduced in the period of kushans uh, that is kashika vastram it means uh, the woolen silk combination the cloth uh, it is a uh, woolen and a silk combination uh, cloth is there that is uh, kashika vastram so and here the people some of the people they want they have to show, they wants to play some dramas especially uh, what we can say uh, regarding the shiva regarding the social system they wants to um, um, exhibit they wants to exhibit the some dramas they are called so shivalakulu they also called shivalakulu the shivalakulu means uh, who play the dramas on the streets so regarding um, social system of kushans there are mahaparivar in the kushans social system we have mahaparivar mahaparivar means uh, the joint families in the period of kushans uh, we have mahaparivars that is called joint families and as well as uh, <coughs> the most important word in the kushans period that is datri that is datri datri means uh, she she was a uh, uh, guardian of the children so she was appointed for uh, maintain the children and uh, she is called uh, guardian of the children that is uh, datri so this is a uh, social condition and uh, also religion what kind of religion they followed already i told uh, so uh, kusala kadpaisas followed buddhism vima kadpaisas followed shaivism that means hinduism and uh, um, kanishka mahayana buddhism vasudeva hinduism that's why this is called uh, a secularistic country a secularist state so they followed uh, different uh, religions and uh, in kushans period uh, we have some literature also because there are vasumitra the great uh, person vasumitra ashwagosha acharya nagarjuna charaka these also stayed in the period of uh, kushans especially uh, vasumitra he wrote uh, 
విభాషిత శాస్త్రం మహా విభాషిత శాస్త్రము దిస్ ఇస్ ఎన్సైక్లోపీడియా ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం మహా విభాష శాస్త్రం ఇస్ కాల్డ్ ఎన్సైక్లోపీడియా ఆఫ్ బుద్ధిజం సో అశ్వఘోష ఈ వ్రోట్ బుద్ధ చరితము అండ్ సౌందర నందనము సో అశ్వఘోష వ్రోట్ బుద్ధ చరిత అండ్ సౌందర నందనము దిస్ టూ బుక్స్ ఆర్ రిటర్న్ బై అశ్వఘోష అండ్ చెరక వి హ్ చెరక చెరక వ్రోటు చెరక సంహిత చెరక వ్రోటు చెరక సంహిత సో దిస్ డయాగ్నసిక్ బుక్ డయాగ్నసిస్ బుక్ బికాస్ టుడే వి ఆర్ డూయింగ్ డయాగ్నసిస్ విచ్ విచ్ డిసీజ్ ఈజ్ దేర్ వి ఆర్ గెటింగ్ రిజల్ట్స్ దట్ మీన్స్ వి ఆర్ ఫైండింగ్ ది డిసీజ్ దట్స్ వై ద డయాగ్నసిస్ సిస్టమ్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇంటర్వ్యూస్డ్ బై చెరకుడు ఫస్ట్ అండ్ వి హ్యావ్ ఆచార్య నాగార్జున ఆచార్య నాగార్జున సో ఈ హ్యాస్ టూ టైటిల్స్ ఆల్రెడీ ఐ టోల్డ్ ఇండియన్ తథాగత సారీ సెకండ్ తథాగత అండ్ ఇండియన్ ఐనిస్టిన్ సో ఈ కాంట్రిబ్యూటర్ సో మచ్ టు బుద్ధిజం మహాయాన బుద్ధిజం ఇవ్రోటు సుహృలేఖన రసరత్నావళి మాధ్యమికవాద ఇవ్రోటు దీస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ బుక్స్ అండ్ ఈ పార్టిసిపేటెడ్ ఇన్ ఫోర్త్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కౌన్సిల్ విచ్ ఈజ్ కండక్టెడ్ బై కనిష్క ఈ పార్టిసిపేటెడ్ ఇన్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కాస ఫోర్త్ బుద్ధిస్ట్ కౌన్సిల్ సో ఈ ప్రపోజ్డ్ మహాయాన బుద్ధిజం సో అండ్ ఈ సపోర్టెడ్ సాన్స్క్రిట్ దట్స్ వై వి హ్యావ్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ పోయిట్స్ ఆర్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కనిష్క అండ్ రిగార్డింగ్ అగ్రికల్చర్ సిస్టమ్ ఫైనాన్షియల్ సిస్టమ్ సో దే సపోర్టెడ్ అగ్రికల్చర్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కుషాన్స్ అగ్రికల్చర్ ఈజ్ మెయిన్ క్రాప్ అండ్ వీట్ బార్లీ అండ్ రైస్ దే ప్రొడ్యూసెడ్ అండ్ కార్షాపన దీనార్ ఈజ్ ద కైండ్స్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కుషాన్స్ కార్షాపన అండ్ దీనార్ దీస్ ఈజ్ ద కైండ్స్ ఇన్ ద పీరియడ్ ఆఫ్ కుషాన్స్ బట్ ఎనీ హ్యావ్ ఫైనల్లీ కుషాన్స్ దే ఆర్ డిఫీటెడ్ బై పర్షియన్స్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ దీస్ ఆర్ కాల్డ్ all the dynasties regarding the foreign dynasties later mauryans we have two local dynasties and four foreign dynasties so two local dynasties are that's one kusha shunga dynasty second kanwa dynasty and later we have foreign dynasties that foreign dynasties indo bactrian shekas parthians and kushans so among all these foreign dynasties the important dynasty is that is kushan dynasty basically they came from foreign country they came from south china central asia but they joined in indian union but anyhow total among all total foreign dynasties the most important ruler strong ruler and a great ruler that is kanishka so after uh, decline of uh, these kushans after decline of kushans uh, uh, we have the gupta dynasty so you see in an in, in indian history it is a sequence one by one it will be occurred that's why one by one dynasties will come so after this foreign dynasties we have we have gupta dynasty so gupta dynasty this is the most important dynasty having lot of information so next class we can discuss about uh, gupta's information and gupta's history